Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Lenny and I'm going to show you in a video log style how I'm building a crypto startup. Let's go! So first of all, in this video I want to show you how I am working on our NFT contract. I'm going to build an ESC1155 contract to have multiple NFT collections in one contract. Of course, there are other standards for NFTs like ESC721. And I think if you are watching my videos, you have already read a lot about NFTs, contracts, solidity. And this is not a tutorial I'm going to do. It's just to lock my progress of becoming a professional crypto startup CEO. I'm not a Solidity, Solidity developer. That's the programming language the contracts are written in. I'm a web developer, normally writing in PHP, in C Sharp, in Python. I'm developing trading boards as a hobby. And I'm a project manager. And as a project manager, I want to know everything a little bit to know what my devs are doing. So let's check my last try. As you can see here on Etherscan, you can use BSC scan for Binance chain contracts. You can use Etherscan for uh, Ether chain contracts. I've already tried it within two times. I am and test NFT1 and this is and I am on test NFT2. If you click the contract tab, you can always from every project, like all the Ape clubs, from every NFT you know, you can check the contract. So my first try was copy and paste stuff from other contracts together. That was not working, which was version number one. Now I had version number two. And if you check a contract here, it can look like this, that it's a lot of stuff interfaces, functions, comments, abstract classes, classes, libraries, and you think I can never do that. That's what, what I was thinking. But I'm a developer, I'm curious how the things are working. So I started to check out templates from OpenSea. For example, OpenSea has this ESC1155 boilerplate you can use for your own contracts. And what I found here was only 110 lines. Other contracts had 2000 lines. So what's the difference? If you're using Open Zeppelin templates with import, as you can see here, this is what all the 1500 lines in front of my real contract is here. So you can use these templates and you don't have to care about all the stuff behind it. If you are checking a contract and it has so many lines, search for the name of the NFT. So if I search it, I come here to line 1759 and this is where my code starts. Everything before this is coming from import statements. So I tried to deploy my code to the blockchain and I checked OpenZap. Uh, open sea and it looked like this there was a collection with one item you have to mint one item to see your collection on open sea but the image was missing all the details of nfts were missing so i had problems in my code and this is where version 3 comes in and i developed it the last days i did not deploy it yet this is something i want to do in this video together with you I'm a bit nervous if it's working, let's see. If the image and all the stuff is missing, there's something wrong with your JSON data. Every NFT has a JSON file behind it, where you have the name, the image URL and some other details inside. I validated my JSON, you can do it with an OpenSea URL, OpenSea assets, the number of the ID of the NFT and validate and it was an invalid response. 
So first I was working with Morales. Morales is an infrastructure as a service for crypto projects and I'm still working with it, but not for the NFT data anymore because it was too much uh, capacity needed on the Morales servers. I think in another video I will talk a little bit about IPFS. For now, everything you need to know here is IPFS is something like Let's let's think about a storage cloud all over the planet, decentralized, of course. So I was starting to use Pinata. And Pinata has a nice uh, has a nice documentation, how it's working. And what I was not understanding until today, you have to upload two different folders. One folder with your images and you will get a unique identifier for this one. This has to be added to the JSON files and you have to upload the second folder with your JSON files. Why can you not all upload all at once? Because you need the unique identifier from the first folder to enter it in the JSON files in your second folder. And you cannot add stuff to the first upload anymore. So, in Pinata I now have my images that was uploaded first and I have my JSON files. This is the unique identifier. I needed the one from the images to fill it in the JSON and the JSON has to go to my contract. Just that you have seen it once. This is how the JSON looks like. Uh, this is not really nice formatted. Let's check if I can quickly show it in a nicer way. Yeah, so we have some attributes. Um, this is the gold NFT. I will have a founder, gold, silver, and bronze NFT in the first contract. A rarity of two, it says a name, and the image. And if you call the image link, it's on Pinata IPFS as well, you can see the image. This is limited version number 10, and it's gold and it has a special background. In another video, I will show you how I created with the script uh, all these M NFT images. Of course, you can add more layers to them, like all these boring apes. They have just different layers, a background, an ape, a hat. Yeah, so you get the idea, idea of uh, randomly putting layers on top of each other. So that's the script that's doing this. Of course, this is not the image we are using in the end. This is for testing purpose only. So if you have everything ready, and that's a lot of work if you have 5,000 NFTs like I have, you need the JSON, sit, and you need something where you can write the contract. Um, for the first tries, like I'm doing it now, uh, I would recommend you to use Remix. Remix is not very stable, but it's easy to start to write code right in your browser. So I did this and like I said, I did some copy and pasting from other contracts. I think that's what developers always do. I decided that I want to use ESC 1155. I decided that they have to be ownable. I found uh, a very nice podcast about the re-entrancy attack um, that was, I think, on a 721 contract. So a lot of contracts at the moment have this re-entrancy guard template to be safe for these kind of attacks. So I included it as well. And I have strings and safe math um, for some special, I think, um, type for have type variables and to, uh, how do you say it in English, change it from one type to another one from an into a string or something. So that was needed as well. Uh, content mixing, native meta transactions, I have no idea what they are doing, but I used the OpenSea Parkpix contract as a boilerplate and they, using, they are using it. So I have added this as well. If we check this Parkpix, this is very easy contract. You always have the same stuff like a constructor where you have the name, the symbol and how many NFTs you want to have. You have a min function, this one. Oh, you have a min function. You can mint batches. That's the good thing of ERC eleven fifty five. You don't have to mint everyone by one. You can mint in batches. 
you have an uh, URL URI function where you can get the, uh, the URL back. You can set re realities, of course. The realities is like 10%. If someone is selling an NFT, you will get 10% of the amount um, the buyer is paying. And so much stuff I just tried around with. But it's always, it's in my contract always based on this part. So let's check my contract. I have OpenSea stuff. If you want to have your collection of OpenSea, it's a good idea. That's what the internet says. To have OpenSea as a proxy in your contract. So OpenSea is not the owner of a contract. OpenSea is not the owner of NFTs, but as a proxy, they can do more stuff with the contract than a normal user can do. Um, I have a special case here. I have different subfolders for the images and the JSON. And this is something that's not needed. <laughs> I don't recommend to do it, but for s I have no idea why I'm sticking to this. But I've written so much functions here to uh, and spend so much time in developing this with subfolders. Now I want to stick to it. I don't have a name symbol and proxy registry address here because at the time I'm compiling and deploying a contract, I will um, give this as a parameter. And I will mint some um, NFTs up front. For example, the owner NFTs will be minted. This fly has to go away. So this founder NFTs uh, will be minted first. They will not have a reality. Oh, as I can see, this is founder in gold. Because I tried to make both in one for, e, uh, for iteration. I will only have one bronze NFT, but 5,000 times. So it's not really a non-fungible token anymore. It's a semi-fungible token. But this is a possibility to make them very cheap because we want to be a project for a broad, a big community um, with people with a lot of money, with people with less money. So everybody can take uh, participate in our project. And with this bronze, I think we have a good way to participate with a little bit of money as well. The spy silver function, I think it's not really needed, but I wrote it to use it on my uh, decentralized app later. So I will have a button by silver and it will call this function and will check can a new silver NFT be minted? Who has to be paid for it? Mint it added to the supply so it cannot be minted more than should be. Same like the min function, what's special here is for the open C. Uh, uh, signals frozen metadata to others over C. This emit URI is an event, like a, on the blockchain an event that um, open C can listen for. The batch minting, the check mint requirement checks if a token exists if enough supply is left. Set creator. In my contract, and I found this somewhere, if the contract is deployed, I can still create new collections. So I should always be able to create new NFTs, new NFT collections with the same contract. But at the moment, I have no idea how this is working with the Pinata stuff I showed you before. But we are learning on the way, right? Yeah, a lot of stuff. And the create function creates a new token type and assigns initial supply to an address. With this one, hopefully I'm later able to add more collections. The realities can be changed later as well. I have no pause unpause function inside the contract because I don't want to pause and unpause my contract. Many have them. For example, if something really bad happens, you can pause all trading of NFTs. But as a buyer, I don't like this function. So as a seller, I will not implement it. And that's it. If you're ready to go, you have to set a compiler version that should match the stuff you're using. I have the same here. You compile the stuff. And afterwards, hopefully it goes through without an error, you have to remember what you are 
enabling here. If you enable optimizations with 200 iterations, just have it in mind, you need it later. So yeah, and afterwards you can, I don't know how to say it, deploy it on your own computer. I did this with the JavaScript VM. And if you have done that, you find your contract functions down here. And this is pretty cool. I can now test, for example, for the founder NFT number three, give me, give me the URL for it. And this is calling all the function codes, the, the contract functions inside this browser. I will get back the URL here and I can check if it's all right. And hopefully it is. Seems to be okay. In the next days, I'm going to test all these functions here to check if everything is ready for the mainnet deployment. Um, I will not only test it here, I will test it on my own website as well. Yes, and now I'm ready. And if I'm ready, I'm going to hit Injected Web 3 to connect it to my MetaMask. So, password. Make sure you are on the testnet. <laughs> Select Injected Web 3, can't detect network. What's this? Oh, let's just reload this page. Hopefully, it will not break. Okay, going back here. First, you have to open the file again. I really have to start working on my IDE and not in this remix anymore. A hey, contract is test NFT free. I would like to inject it web free. Now it's coming up. Perfect. Make sure you're on the test net. Make sure you select the correct contract. I need some stuff. It's Iamond test NFT free symbol ADN free. And I need the proxy address from Open C and transact. Hopefully, I have enough gas. Let's check how many, how much. It's zero dot zero one six. Okay, make sure you're on the test net. I recommend to develop in a different browser and with a different wallet and a different MetaMask because, like, you are trading normally. Yeah, and view it on Etherscan. This is a Ring B testnet transaction. Transaction 7 confirmed. Let's check. I think it's still working. <laughs> ah, here it is. And I have a new contract. Tracked. As you can see here, it's just bytecode. What I have to do now is to validate it, uh, verify and publish. And this is why my contracts look so big, because I'm now flattening it. I save it. Somewhere. Inside Remix. Mm, nice. Compiler type, single file. Compiler version has to be the same like before, so remember it. MIT is the first line that's written inside. Contract. I enter the contract code here and the optimization I told you. Do not forget it. Optimization, yes. And now he says he needs the parameters. That's something really stupid. Okay, 
So this is a nice little website. I have to enter my abi. I think it's somewhere here. Test NFE abi. So here. I enter the abi here. I click pass. And now I have to enter here. I meant test NFT3. And the proxy address. Again. I copy this nice little code. I add it here. I'm not a robot. Verify and publish. <gasps> And, as a result, success. Is this nice? Because of this, now the contract is verified. And you can see it here. Nice, huh? In the next version, I'm going to implement a min function in a basic HTML page. We will mint our first NFT. And afterwards, it should be visible on OpenSea instead of the old one. Ah, here, here you can already see it. With all the items you have minted during the contract deployment. And we have to check the details if the JSON file is correct or not. Reload here. Go to the validate page. Validate it. It's true, so the JSON is fine. Where's my OpenC collection? Here. Yeah, but it's not showing yet here. But that's something. We will check in the next video. Because I think we did everything correct. Okay, see you next time with creating a min function in an HTML file with paying for the silver NFTs and hopefully with viewable images in JSON. Bye bye and join our Discord server for pre-sale token discussions.